There was a man in the Mughal period who was hated by the Mughals but loved by the people of Alan. When the current government was taking away all the Mughal names of the cities, they named the city after this man. What did he do so great that a government which was getting rid of all the Mughal names felt the necessity to name a city after this man? And how did this man face a terrible ending just because he preferred the well-being of people over religion? Do watch till the end to get a complete understanding of the story. Dara Shuko, a forgotten chapter in the Mughal's history. He was the first son of Shah Jahan and the eldest brother of Aurangzeb. He was just seven years old when Prince Kuram, that is Shah Jahan, rebelled against the emperor, his father Jahangir. But Shah Jahan was not the first son. He had two elder brothers. Eventually, he could not succeed in that rebellion. And four years later, the defeated Prince Shah Jahan was welcomed back into the royal family and was forgiven for his mistakes. Anyway, he was someone who rebelled against. the king so jahangir was not ready to completely trust him so he took away his own grandchildren the children of shah jahan as hostages at the palace so for almost 5 years dara shuko grew up in a very restricted environment and he met his father only at the age of 13 when shah jahan was finally crowned as the emperor among all the sons of shah jahan dara shuko was his father's favorite he was trying to be the future emperor since his childhood while all his brothers were sent to distant provinces as his administrators dara shuko was kept within the palace so he had time to concentrate on spirituality dara shuko was someone who realized the truth of what we call as the ultimate is not entitled to any particular religion but can be found in all religions he not only read the literature of islam but also of other religions and he also conversed with learned men of those religions to get a deeper understanding a text called mukalima e dara shuko va baba lal captures a spiritual conversation between dara shuko and baba lal a hindu mystic from punjab who later recognized as lal dayal This conversation clearly portrays the curiosity of Dara Shuko about the various aspects of Hinduism and later he referred to Baba Lal as one of the perfect man. By the age of 44 he wrote a book called Majma Ul Bahrain which means mingling of two oceans. In this 57 page document he analytically compares the aspects of Hinduism and Islam and points of the huge similarities in their basic values. But he was highly criticized and hated by the Mughal scholars of the court because of this his liberal qualities but he did not care about that he also translated 50 chapters of upanishads from sanskritam to persian in a book called sir e akbar he finished this book in 1657 in the same year his father shah jahan was struck with severe illness at that time the other three brothers were in different regions as governors when they came to know about this they suspected that their father had really died and the news had been suppressed by their elder brother dara shuko in order to capture the empire shuja the second son of shah jahan announced himself as emperor and marched towards the empire but on arriving near banaras he was defeated by an army sent against him under the leadership of dara shuko's son suleiman shuko murad the youngest son and aurangzeb the third son entered into an agreement to partition the empire and that agreement was made in the name of god and the prophet the terms of the agreement were one third of the booty would belong to murad and two thirds to aurangzeb after the conquest of the empire the punjab after Afghanistan Kashmir and Sindh would belong to Murad and he would establish a standard kingship there now the combined armies of Aurangzeb and Murad marched towards north and reached a place called Dagmat which was 14 miles southwest of Ujjain Dara Shuko sent an army under Raja Jaswan Singh of Jodhpur and Kasim Khan to stop the enemies but they got badly defeated by the army of Aurangzeb and Murad the king of Jodhpur Jaswan Singh ran away from the battlefield when he reached his castle his proud wife shut the gates of the castle and refused to allow him inside because he went there running away from the battlefield and that's not at all acceptable in the Hindu community now the army of Aurangzeb and Murad started marching towards Agra Dara Shuko was also ready with 50000 soldiers both the armies met at a place called samugar which was 8 miles to the east of agra fort the battle was vigorous and both the armies fought so intensely but unfortunately dara shikos elephant got severely wounded by an arrow so he got down from the elephant and mounted a horse and this one action decided the fate of this battle 
seeing their master's elephant empty the soldiers thought something bad had happened to daga shiko so there were lot of distress in the army and the soldiers slowly started giving up now the defeat was inevitable so daga shiko leaving his army fled towards agra when he reached there he was in an unspeakably wretched condition Daga Shiko was defeated merely because of few tactical mistakes and the price he had to pay for that was something he would have never imagined. Obviously the next logical thing for Aurangzeb was to capture the throne of Hindustan. So he marched towards Agra and captured the fort. Then Shah Jahan and his daughter Jahanara both were imprisoned by Aurangzeb. Now Aurangzeb imprisoned Murad breaking the agreement that was made in the name of God and Prophet Muhammad. Later Murad was also killed and Aurangzeb became the sole emperor of Hindustan. Daga Shiko and his son Suleiman Shiko were deserted by his generals and soldiers because they thought there was no gain in following the losing side any longer. Finally Suleiman Shiko with his wife and few other ladies and only with 7 followers found refuge with a Hindu king who took care of them with all kindness. But due to the pressure given by Aurangzeb the son of the Hindu king betrayed them and Suleiman was arrested and brought in chains before Aurangzeb. There was something called pausha drink which is kind of slow poisoning. Suleiman told Aurangzeb that he would prefer immediate death to slow poisoning. Aurangzeb also promised that the pausha drink will not be given to him, but the promise was not kept and the deadly drink was given to Suleiman forcefully every morning for 2 years until he died. In the meantime, Daga Shiko was in Lahore to find the army to encounter Aurangzeb. Since it was raining, he thought it would take some time for Aurangzeb to reach there. But within a month, the army of Aurangzeb reached Lahore. Now Daga Shiko was totally unprepared, ran away with his family to Multan. But from place to place, he was chased by the officers of Aurangzeb. Finally, he got a place to hide in Gujarat and started preparing the army. In 1659, a battle happened between Daga Shiko and Aurangzeb, in which Daga Shiko badly got defeated. Again, he started running from place to place, but could not. not find any asylum finally he found shelter with jivan khan few years back jivan khan was saved from the death sentence that was given by his father Shah Jahan but again the fate of Daga Shiko was very unfortunate his lovable wife Nadira Begum who had been his devoted companion in the days of wanderings got really sick because of diarrhea mountain after mountain of trouble he got tired he mentally didn't have the courage to take it anymore and to add fuel to the fire Jivan Khan with whom Daga Shiko was staying betrayed him Daga Shiko and his family were brought to Delhi and they were paraded throughout the city to complete his humiliation Daga Shiko was seated on the back of a small female elephant which was covered with dirt he felt so humiliated he didn't even raise his head he was just sitting there completely broken his unfortunate situation evoked sympathy in the hearts of the people Bonia an eyewitness of the scene says the crowd assembled was immense and everywhere i observed the people weeping lamenting the fate of Daga in a most touching language from every quarter i heard piercing and distressing shrieks men women and children wailing as if some mighty calamity had happened to themselves but not a single hand raised to rescue daga shiko as he was surrounded by the soldiers but people rioted against the traitor jivan khan but unfortunately this riot made the issue even more complicated his case was placed before the doctors of muslim law who condemned him on a charge of deviation from the islamic faith and the night Night of 30th August, Daga Shiko was beheaded, and by the orders of Aurangzeb, his body was paraded throughout the city to let the people know that their favorite was no more. Thus, the life of the most liberal and kind man of Mughal dynasty came to an end. And I'm really glad that the government decided to rename the Dalhousie Road, which is located near the Rashtrapati Bhavan, as Daga Shiko Road. These kind of personalities who favored the well-being of people over their religion should not be. forgotten in the chapters of our history